You are on. What? You're on. I'm on. You're on. Hey, folks. You can search no more. The abominable snowman is here in person. The abdominal snowman. Right. And the indomitable snowman, too. The guy that's got three coats and got them all on. You I got enough on here that you could turn that heater off, and I'd never know it for the next 30 minutes. I believe it'll leave you down. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Those leather jackets like that, they're not exactly made for warmth. <laughs> this, it's got hair inside of it. Has it? Yeah, buddy. I ain't cold. Ah. <laughs> I got a leather jacket home and absolutely belt you down. It's what? It will absolutely burn you up. Really? Yeah, and made in Korea. Yeah, what? Them Koreans got? must be cold what nature. Got yak. I don't know. It's got, may have... Right. I don't know, a possum hair or well, something. Probably, probably. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, What's going on, Bobby T? Well, I don't know. You know, it's uh, everything's coming along real good, just like I forecast it would. Uh, uh, I said if we, we need to cheer up those things, because uh, things could be worse, and we cheered up, and sure enough, things got worse. Proved that, didn't so, it? Uh, you know, uh, I've noticed that uh, in, in listening to our president, somebody's president, uh, Barack Obama, and also listening to Halloran Hilton Hill, they remind me of Don Quixote. Well, what's Don Quixote got to do with it? Well, he went around fighting... Uh, what he thought was dragons and something that needed to be fought. And there, Barack Obama and Halloran Hilton Hill are still sitting there uh, fighting the Civil War battles of the 60s. What's Halloran Hill done? Uh, well, he, all these things, how does it feel to be of a mixed race and this, that, and that, you know, just agonizing over every little point uh, regarding uh, uh, your... Uh, DNA, and uh, which uh, I mean, <laughs> looks like to me we can move on to, to something else rather than keep fighting those battles and worrying about those things. That gets votes. Hmm? That gets votes. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. When you start uh, doing things for the children hmm. and doing things to. Uh, you know, I haven't seen anything since the 60s that did uh, anything for racial equality. It did a whole lot for racial inequality. And I feel like, uh, you know, the uh, black family. Well, we have our first affirmative action president. Oh, you're talking about Barack Obama? Yeah. Well, I understand that, but... You know, the black family survived uh, being captured and taken into slavery and being held in slavery for I don't know how long. And uh, then the Democratic Party comes along and, fla and just destroys the black family. I've noticed that. But that's the way it is. Well, it may be the way it is, but that's not necessarily the way it should be. And uh, what was it? Uh, who was it signed off and said that's the way it is tonight or something like that? That would be uh, uh, Walter Cronkite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, Hello, everybody. I'm glad you could tune in. We ain't got much unusual foolishness tonight. Just the same old crowd. Bob's here with all these clothes on. Yeah. I'm sitting here with a whole lot of mine on, and Digger's propane is burning right over there, and it's working good. I guarantee you. You know, I went down to Digger's the other day, and I, I asked Digger why he didn't uh, incorporate and go public and let me buy some shares in that little operation he's got mm. going on down there. I went down to Diggers today. 
Did you have them lined up? Yeah, and I lined some up down there too. Right. I didn't go today. I went to, uh, when did I go last? Must have been Friday. I tell you, Digger's got a good thing going down there. The only problem, he has to work. Well, I know that. Yeah, I noticed that, yeah. And uh, if he could uh, automate that thing some way, you Yeah, self-service. Yeah, yeah. Ask somebody to spill it. Well, yeah, somebody would, yeah. Somebody would run a good thing, you know. And uh, But he's got mm -hmm. good propane, good winter program. Pain now. If you five six two one. five four 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 right in the middle of the road. Yeah, Digger's got the propane propane of record. Right. Exactly right. And, uh, Ain't nobody need no propane if they don't need to go see Digger. Right. I'll buy that. And if you need any concrete, who do, would you call? Don't call Digger. You call who Digger calls. Oh, Digger probably would tell you to call uh, Dixie Concrete. Well, that's what he told me. I won't tell you what them Dixie boys has got a secret. They got a recipe. They got a recipe, but they've also got a secret. Did you know that they sell boat anchors? Well, they ain't keeping no secrets on the steps now, are they? They ain't got no steps, but they've got boat anchors. You reckon you couldn't stack them boat anchors and make the steps out of them? You could if you stack them right. right. Boy, I'm sleeping tonight for some reason. I believe he is too. I've been laying out every night what he's been doing, folks. I've been going up country time dancing. Right, I don't know. I'm going to go up to Mama's, Mama's, Mama's place uh, Friday, I think, and Get some pictures up there so all you people who don't want to be photographed, stay at home. Right. If you're up there with somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife, uh, you better make it a masquerade party. You folks go to UG TV, which you're doing now, and follow the links. You can see all these your little videos I've stored away there on the YouTube or the Ustream. Right. And you can even see a rebroadcast of this wonderful performance. I got Bob doing it now. Yeah, it's catching. There was some good music down at uh, Country Times uh, Saturday night. Yeah, there, there was. was. Some good music Friday night down there. I went down there Friday and Saturday night. Well, you're going to wear out your welcome if you ain't careful. Well, I know that, yeah. They asked me, they probably asked me not to come back, you know. I think they got good music. I kind of like to stir things around, you know, give everybody a fair shake. I'm going to go up and, and see Mama's place again. I can't do a live broadcast from up there, so I don't, you, you, I don't even try. No, look, I'm going to do you, much. See what, see what I've done to my telephone? Huh? See what I've done to my telephone? Who, who'd you get mad at? I dropped it over there and broke it. I put a piece of tape over it so it wouldn't fall apart. Right. Still works. I don't recommend it though. No. <laughs> Dixie Concrete's got uh, all sorts of concrete. They've got uh, septic systems and they've got them big old concrete blocks that you can use for boat anchors. And they got boat anchors. And Bob up there is kind of like a boat anchor. He's got some of everything, ain't you? I got a little bit of everything. Yeah, I've got uh, uh, play pens for babies. Baby play pen. I've got uh, uh, these uh, amusement areas that they get in there, and they got all sorts of things to play Get with. amused. I've got uh, uh, high chairs and strollers. And low and, chairs. Uh, uh, car seats. And, uh, I've got refrigerators, stoves, uh, washing machines, dryers, uh, dishwashers. Uh, no, my dishwashers. Uh, no, I got a electric dishwasher and uh, uh well, you let the other dishwashers get away didn't you yeah. <laughs> dough beaters yeah i know that <laughs> ah anybody needs a good storage building put all them our treasures in that you got for christmas richard here he he builds good storage buildings yeah, yeah, and I, got I, one built. well he just got to put a tin on he's kind of waiting to see what color somebody right. wanted color color scheme to order and that means you can decide what color you want and it's uh, it's it's a good sturdy building, and it's a whole lot cheaper than the competitors. Right. You don't have any competition on buildings like that. Well, no. There's is made a little more 
insignificantly or something like that. Right. What's going on locally, Bobby? I noticed, well, I mean, no. we got a new, uh, a new, uh, no, we didn't get one. We lost a dedicated public servant. Who? Cade. He leave? Yeah, he's resigned. Did he? I thought what happened was the one that had the rag. Well, Cade let him drive the truck. Okay. okay. I told Cade he went in there, he was making a mistake, but as well as he's got paid for what time he's been in there, I guess I was the one who made the mistake. Right. Probably. Well, you know, uh, it all what goes around comes around. You know, Cade and Hanford are partners together in a coal mining operation. And, uh, you know, you've heard the old saying, they're just as thick as flies. Thick as flies. <laughs> How thick are flies? <laughs> How thick are flies? Right. <laughs> oh. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you something. The county commission down here is pulling a few shenanigans, too. But since I swore off on politics, you all are just going to have to research that yourself. Right. I tell you, they need to get an oversight committee. And see on over several, On several things here. Namely where all the money that the county commission has to come in and to the county, uh, they need to make a complete expose on every check that's written. Yeah, and they need to take a little look at where some of that money is getting ciphered off. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, the city is spending that faster than they got coming, coming in. And... Uh, so I guess they planning on uh, all that money they're going to be getting off of Lowe's Hardware now that they're not having to pay Lowe's Hardware. Have they made the final installment yet? I don't know. Uh, there was, you know, I keep waiting on my check. I've been here longer than yeah. Lowe's. Right. I'm, I think I'm going to put me a sign out and let everybody know that I'm in the process of being incubated and I want some incubating money. How is that incubator going? They ought to be about out of money by now. Well, they probably, they probably be asking for some more money, you know. They've started so many new businesses up here, you know. Yeah, they need to fund that thing, too. Uh, so everybody can have fun. Hmm? So everybody can have fun. Yeah. Yeah, they've, they've done a tremendous job, you know. I know. I, I mean, everywhere I look, there's a new skyscraper going up with well, some I new know. corporation. I know. Probably it was probably the incubator to uh, talk to Family Dollar into moving. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I don't know why they got a turning lane before they opened up, and it took me 30 years to get one. I mean, I don't care for them getting a turning lane. I just want to know why I didn't get one right. quicker. Yeah, we. Yeah, I was here what ten years before I got one. Yeah, that may have been the reason it took a little extra time for me to get one. <laughs> You're right. <coughs> yep, if you hadn't been there, it might have come I along faster. Hey, it was twenty years running when I got here. <laughs> well, yeah, and the whole I mean since the beginning of the time before that, but they'd been talking about and measuring and <coughs> trying to figure out how to do it for over thirty years. It took them three days to do it. No, it didn't. It didn't take that long. I watched it. It took them half one day to get ready and the half other day to mark it off, and that's done. Part of two days. Well, that and, was a tremendous enterprise to undertake. I know, and I'm going to tell you something. Some people won't believe this, but there was never a week went by here for about 20 years that I didn't... See, longer than that. Yeah, I didn't see at least one wreck. I mean, not an, I'm on average, there were weeks went by, but there'd be weeks when we had, I remember one week we had 15 cars damaged out here in two different wrecks. So on average, there was a car a week, at least a car a week damaged out there. Sometimes people killed, oftentimes hurt. Well, probably it was like new collisions, and it kept them from... I'm doing. sure, I bet you they noticed a decline in business. Right. And since they put that turning lane in, and that's been six years ago, I would say. 
I, and I know there have been some collisions up and down the road here in different places, and maybe some right here. But I have yet to see a wreck out there in the road since they did that. Now, there was some drunk Mexicans come running up through here and run out of the road and right. run into a light pole. But they, they let them go because they said one of them was hurt. Yeah, they didn't lock them up because they didn't want to have to take them to the hospital. And they done about $50,000 worth of damage, but they didn't wreck out there on the highway. They wrecked in here. Had nothing to do with the turning lane. Had to do with a few people that had overindulged. I'd say counting the cost of the truck that they had bought on credit, there's over $50,000 worth of damage. Probably. It ain't easy, you know, when you... Uh, but that's, uh, that's okay. See, everything like that is undocumented. Yeah, that's kind of like this show. This is an undocumented show, folks. Right. Although we do have pretty good viewership tonight, we're undocumented. Yeah. But, you know, there's no advantage to being documented. That's what I tried to tell Adrian when he was wanting to document all them dogs. I mean, you well, that's a political deal. If you, can't, if you can't keep up with how many people you got in the county or in the country illegally, how can you keep up with the dogs? Down there, hopeless, hopeless case, really. Did you hear that deal about uh, the people that got lost on the uh, the airplane just they were flying around and they just had enough gas and stuff to land? They landed on this here deserted island and 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 they didn't look like they was going to be rescued. The captain said, "We're all healthy and we're all okay." But we don't expect to ever be rescued because all of the tracking systems is down. Ain't nobody got no idea where we're at. They all think we're wrecked in the ocean. Just get used to living here. That's where you're going to live out your days. An old guy looked at his wife and he said, Honey, did you mail our income tax payment? And she said, No, dear, I forgot. He said, Don't worry, they'll find yep. us. <laughs> That's about the truth. The most brutal collection agency in the world. Yeah, is the now don't thing. worry, they'll be here for long, sometime after the 15th. Right. <laughs> That's probably very, very true. Uh, have you uh, been keeping up with some of the uh, uh, stories about Amelia Earhart? Well, yeah, but I mean, there's a new one all the time. Well, what's the latest? Well, did you Space hear Aliens? Uh, Space Aliens? No, the word that they were captured by the Japanese. I heard that. I read that uh, 40 years ago. Yeah, I know that. And uh, uh, some guy is supposed to have some documentation uh, that they had them as prisoners there on, uh, what was that, was that Saipan, Saipan or? I don't know. I think they got captured by the Lost Squadron. Maybe, maybe. Wrong ocean, but right. don't make no difference. They're probably up there frozen up under Greenland. Could be. Did you go up and see the gla Glacier, no, girl? No, I didn't get up there and see Glacier. Oh, girl. Lord, that's something. That oh, was it P-38? Yeah. And it was... But I had 200, seen, 200, I've seen a P-38. Well, this one was 268 feet underneath the ice. Yeah. And it had been building well, up. I I had to be going to get down that far in those eyes. Well, I don't know, but they parked it on top. And in the course of uh, 50 years, it went down 268 feet. If it hadn't been for global I warming, probably it, forgot to cut the heater off. If it hadn't been for global warming, it'd been down to the center of the earth by now. Uh, at least, yeah. Because it's warmed up and kept it from going down any Yeah, probably. buddy, I mean, if we just waited, it won't be long, the law will be uncovered. We're just going to probably fly them home. Right. Well, you know, let me ask you something. How come all these ancient cities are buried under so much dirt? It's dirt coming. You know, we're getting new dirt. We're getting replenished all the time. It's from uh, asteroids and and meteors and star clutter and stuff. Well, now they say that the Amazon soil is real, real poor because all that old dust and poor dirt from Africa gets blown over and settles in... Uh, the Amazon's forest. I never did hear that. Is that right? Yeah. 
Hmm. That's amazing. And it's uh, a very, uh, a lot of it was a very poor soil and uh, only uh, suitable for the native vegetation that's growing on it. Of course, that may be uh, a concocted story to keep people out of there, you know. And uh, I just don't know. You don't know what you know what to believe. You know, every time they come out with some uh, theory about something, you got to look and say, now, who would want things to be this way? Well, how does it get there from Africa? Well, the west, there is, let's see, we're the west of Africa, aren't they? Trade with. Oh, that's it. They're trading dirt. Huh? They're trading dirt. <laughs> and you know why you have the desert belt above and below the equator, yeah, don't right. you? The desert belt above and below the equator? Uh, well, I guess they won't desert. No, what it is, on average, the equator is the warmest part of the Earth because it gets the most, on average, sunlight. Yeah. And where you got... It also boils down closer to the sun. Yeah, and where you get, uh, where you get the most heat, you've got an updraft of air currents. So an updraft encourages rainfall. So you have rain around the equator. That's the wet. But it, but it takes yeah. the moisture away from that band. But it, when it comes back down and swirls back as it gets up to the top of the, of the ionosphere and swirls back down, a downdraft inhibits rainfall. That's why you have a desert belt about um, 15 degrees of north and south of the equator. You know, in Chile, they don't rain there every 40 years. They don't even put roofs on houses. Yeah, I know that, yeah. Uh, I couldn't make a living there. Well, you could, yeah. You could mine guana. I guess I could, but I sure couldn't sell no roofing. Huh? Couldn't sell no roofing. <laughs> Folks yeah. need a roof. It rained last you week. Know, uh, you might want to think about getting you, know, you one. There's something to the theory that the Earth, by its constant rotation around, has flattened at the poles. Okay, boils down at the center, which uh, that's my problem. That's me too, and which has caused uh, uh, the warming, uh, higher temperatures as a result of that, because it has uh, brought the uh, really the northern hemisphere a little bit closer to the equator and uh you know there's about four thousand miles difference in circumference so that would be about a thousand miles that'd be 500 miles on average taking out 500 miles further out right. wouldn't it right yeah a little over 500 miles right well, you know, you get 500 miles closer to the stove, it's bound to be warmer. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, this science lesson, folks, is just I part of the folks, general you know, scheme. They, we, they, we, need, they need to take us into the uh, uh, school system and let us teach science. We could probably have our own little PBS thing going here. Yeah, that right. You yeah. could be Big Frog or, or what's right. his name? Kermit. Right. And I could be... Um, I don't know who I can. I ain't been Miss Piggy. Who else? Right. Bert I, and Ernie, I guess. Oh, I, I went to school with old Henderson, you know, one that created uh, Sesame Street with his nephew. His name wasn't Henderson. What was it? Henson. Huh? Henson? Henson, I mean. Yeah, Henson. I went to school with his nephew. Well, I went to school with a fellow that knew the guy that used to go to school with. Uh, well, I've lost track. Okay, well, we're, we're, we're probably somewhere on the right <laughs> right page. Well, you know. did he have any frogs in his pocket? No, but he, he was a very, very country. He come down there and he was wearing heel taps on his shoes. And then we'll forget you could hear him coming down the hall of the dormitory. Sparks are flying. Well, you knew who it was because he was just a stomping with those, uh, those heel, heel taps. Then he became a high school teacher. And, I, and he became a football coach. 
he, he never played football. He was a real small, small person. But he loved his sports, and uh, uh, he became uh, a pretty successful high school football coach. And uh, I went down to see him after the game, and he won. And I couldn't believe how he had changed and become the white shirt and tie, no heel down. Lost all personality, didn't he? Lost all of his identification. That's what they try to do. The schools are to make everybody be like everybody. You know, there's not supposed to be any difference. You know, nobody's supposed to be it to its sale. Nobody's supposed to fail. Everybody's supposed to be mingle in together. Everybody gets a trophy. Right. So, uh, well, you know, in this time of the year, in this sort of weather, you might find that you have a little problem starting your car. I would like to recommend that you go up to Napa Auto Parts and get you some gas treatment. Right. Also, you might want to check about getting you one of them good batteries and to just keep a whizzing after everything else is quit. Right. You might even need to get you some new spark plugs and stuff. Yeah. And get fixed up and you better check your antifreeze. Right. Because it ain't going to get warm and stay warm for a while longer. No. You might want to make sure you got some car chains if you need them because you put them on the front now. Don't put them on the back anymore. <laughs> that way they can you know, shake like, your teeth not, as you're going down the road. like my wife and my sister were pulled up down to the beach one night. I was already down there worrying about the one oh, oh, that was stuck up out there in the sand. My sister, just, they were driving a 50 model Ford coupe. My sister told my wife, said, get out and see whether it's the front or the back wheels that's spinning. Oh, <laughs> well, see, she had a Jeep, and uh, yeah, she, uh, she, that's the reason she's thinking that Ford was the same way. She got a Jeep. I sold them that Jeep. I traded a 50 model Chevrolet Coupe for a 48 Willis Jeep that had hydraulic lift on the back. It had run 40 miles an hour, too. Well, at least, had hydraulic lift on the back had a set of a bush hog to go on it. You could, you could, you could, uh, well, bush hog, well, I'm talking about a, it had a... Mower. Uh, no, it was a, a disc, mm -hmm. yeah, disc. Mm -hmm. and then it had leveling hair that went behind it, and uh, you could just farm with that Jeep. Did you know that you can Jeep makes the only motor I'm aware of that you don't need a ring squeezer to put the pistons and rings in it when you overhaul it. What, an uh, old Jeep? You can change the rings and the rod bearings in a Jeep without taking the heads off. You just pull the pan and... You pull the pan and the, and the cylinder's tapered at the bottom. They made it that way so you could work on it. You put the new rings under and line them up and just push it up in there and bolt it, it and your new inserts right. to the crankshaft and you're ready to go. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. That's right. I didn't know that. I don't, I'm don't. i sure they ain't that way now, but them old Willis Jeeps, right. you could, you could, if you need to overhaul one, you're using oil and rod right. knocking, you pull the pan off of it and you could get to the pan. They didn't have it hid. You pull the pan off of it and... Uh, Take them uh, bearings off of the crank. If you needed uh, main bearings, you change them and then change your, your rod bearings. Took the rods loose and you put them there and new bearings on there. And took you had the pistons out, you cleaned the grooves and wiped them off, put you some new rings on and fixed them so they wasn't all lined up and wouldn't leak. Push them up in there and bolt them on. You could overhaul one one morning by yourself if you had good tools. <laughs> You didn't even have to jack it up. That's a lot of difference between two thousand some models. Yes, sir. You you can't even get the pan off one of them unless you take the exhaust system completely down, or you cut it one or the other. I had to change the starter on a on a car, and I had to take the I had to cut the exhaust system. To do that. Ugh TV. Hey. Hey, good evening, Ugh TV. Well, hello there. How are you? Gentlemen, y'all hitting on a few subjects here. 
You know, I figured that Jeep thing would get you. Boy, you figured that mechanic thing, didn't you? It's me, uh, you know these fellas used to compare fingernails and see who had the bluest ones? <laughs> yeah. Bob wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that new fingernail polish for that. Anyhow, you was talking about them engines. You know, you can take uh, the old Mack engine, the old 237, 673, they tell them. I have to confess, I ain't worked on a lot of Macs, but I know a fella that has. Okay. Uh, you can put a, a rod, wrist pin, and the whole nine yards in one without pulling a head on it. You can slide that piston down. You can turn it, uh, of course, you know, disconnect it from the crank. Turn your crank right. Bring it down. Take the lock ring out. Slide that wrist pin out. Put a new rod in, whatever, and put it right back up. Can you take the piston completely out? No. You can't take the piston completely okay. out. Well, you it, can, that Jeep. Well, you it can't. It had a tapered cylinder on the bottom. Uh -huh. got bigger at the bottom. Yeah, so it but would you, automatically, I mean, it, it uh, got back to the right size when you got up at the end of the stroke. Well, it was self-squeezing itself yeah. one of them. Yeah, uh, <laughs> had a funnel at the bottom, four of them. Okay, that, but that, that cylinder, that taper part you're talking about only come down, it wasn't in the travel of the ring when the engine was running. That's right. Because, you know, that your rings wouldn't last long at all yeah, that's if you right. did that. They were, it was down below the right. end of the stroke. Sounds like a winner. Yeah. Hey, uh, gentlemen, another subject. I read an article in the paper to last <laughs> week. Yeah. And it really caught my eye. And it's titled, let me, let me take a look here so I can get this right in my third grade education here. County to Sell Solar Power. Uh, that really caught my eye because I didn't know the county had any uh, solar power to sell. Gentlemen, can you, you've got a commercial just come on right there. Do you want me to wait till? No, that, we ain't got no commercial. Oh, well, we, might, we got one in there. We don't, we don't get nothing out of it. Yeah, wait till it goes off so everybody can hear you. Okay, that yeah. Commercial, it's a, that it's commercial, a, I don't even know when it's on. It's automatic. Yeah. And it, uh, it pays the bill for the the electronics part of this thing. I don't know who it is or what it is and got no control over it. Yeah, well, it, uh, I believe we're back on now. Okay. I think we are. Anyhow, uh, this article, where the county is to sell solar power, and I didn't know we had any solar power that we could sell till I got to reading this thing. And that was wealthy, didn't you? I figured out, baby, we're eat up with solar power and I didn't know it. Uh, I've there's so many things here that education to be had, and one of the key things that I found out about the thing was that my first opinion was that it wasn't going to cost us nothing, but it's going to cost us, in the long run, about $2.3 million in order to sell it. Not this pocket change. One of the things that caught my eye about it was, and this is direct from the paper, it says, uh, to do, to do, to do, so forth about uh, the county, the Campbell County Board. Let me switch on over here just a second, take just a minute. The Campbell County Board of Education approved the issuance of $1.3 million in bonds to finance installing solar panels at nine school sites. And I cannot figure out, unless this is a misprint or something's wrong here, it makes no sense, how does the Board of Education approve the issuance of bonds? How can, are they entitled to uh, go into debt? Uh, if they are, that's a really, a, that's a new one on me. If a department can go into debt and issue bonds, then any other department could probably do the same thing, I guess. But that, that's one thing I never heard of. This thing goes on to tell. And like I say, uh, there's a direct quote in here that really, uh, it says that they're not going to use this electricity, but they're going to sell it back to the TVA. <clears throat> and they put in some numbers here what uh, the kilowatts, they're going to get 11, 11 cents, 11.36 cents. 
is my understanding, yes, per kilowatt. That's per thousand watts they're going to get 11 cents for it. Uh, we're going to be rich. That's just like having the oil well. Well, they got another thing in here that I don't understand where it says that uh, they're going to get a 12 cents per kilowatt rebate. And I don't understand how they're going to get a rebate. Uh, the whole thing makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, solar power is a, it may be the power of the future, but right now, if solar power was financially feasible, and this is another thing, and all this uh, gobbledygook that I read, I never heard nowhere in here what it said anything about uh, whether they've bid this thing. They've already determined how much money to spend, but it don't say anything about who the, who they bid with or none of that stuff. It don't tell how many you're children. Just, you're just wanting details. This has not been worked out yet. You're going to have to pass it before you understand this. Well, that's a trend, you know. From what I'm understanding, that this is going to go up for vote tonight, or may have already been voted on. To, but here's here's. You give what, up on going down there? I, yeah, I did. I got to thinking about it. Uh, if the general public is going to be ripped off for this kind of money, I might just pay my share and say to heck with it. Uh, it makes no sense. The whole thing. There's no. Uh, I've never seen no feasibility study of the thing, telling whether that this makes any sense or not. And I've kind of come to the conclusion that it's better just to sit back in life after it happens than it is to try to keep it from happening. Well, they won't. They, you know, that's where Barack Obama got this idea of going ahead and doing it and then discuss it. You know, well, the uh, the this thing. It, uh, it, it's crazy. They're going to put these panels, according to the way this, they're talking this thing, they're going to install this on top of school buildings. Yeah. Okay, anything you attach to a roof, and most of these school buildings are flat roofs, or the ones that I've seen are, when they attach to the roof, you have the possibility there of a leak, of those roofs leaking. I think and, they ought to put them in the yard, and that way you wouldn't have to climb up on top of the house to clean them all. Right, well, there you go. Okay, now they say, in, according to this uh, article, that these things are insured or guaranteed for one year. Okay, but then it says there's going to be insurance on them. Whenever, once we install these things, if there was a financial or a feasibility study on this, there would be a cost figured in for maintaining them, someone to look after them or whatever, uh, someone to clean them, and anything else that has to be done to it. And none of that's in here. What they're doing, from what I read, they're going to vote the money. I don't see nowhere about who who they're doing business with or nothing. And if this might you're be... Just a, you're just a troublemaker, ain't you? Well, uh, you know, a little education can be a dangerous thing. In that third grade, I should have probably learned more. But I see something wrong here. I see something real bad wrong. And they... Somebody threw a name in there that really caught my eye whenever they said uh, uh, whoever the mayor is down there, Beard, yeah, William Beard, and David Young. Well, and I was down there when this thing was first mentioned last year sometime, I think, and I heard a definite assurance that there was no money out of pocket for the county. <laughs> said that more than once. I might even have a tape of that. Who made that statement? Our illustrious mayor. Well, you no money. If you don't have any money in your pocket, then there cannot be any money out of your pocket. That's it. The, they're borrowing the money. Yeah, they're borrowing it. Well, they're not, u- they're not using any of our money. They're going to use borrowed money then. Yeah, I, well, you're correct. They're going to use somebody else's money. We're going to pay it back. we got to pay it back, though. Now, technically, you're right. That's right. I see what you're saying. But if I'm not mistaken, the last account I had, the county owes somewhere in the vicinity of $100 million right now. Well, this two-point-something is just pocket change, see? Sure. 
Okay. Yeah, everybody Whenever, ought to put it's up like a bunch two of two cents out of a dollar. Right. If our county commission votes on this thing and they have no more information than what's in this, what I'm reading in this article, there is something real bad wrong. If if our county commissioners don't ask some real questions, one of them asked something about if it. Uh, if they got a hailstorm and got them broke, and that's whenever Mr. Marlowe stated that they would be insured. But then one, I believe, uh, Mr. Walden, I believe, asked the question or, or was in question of the fact that these things are supposed to lie, or be set there for 15 years. And his opinion, some of the buildings wouldn't last that long. So Mr. Marlowe's response was that they, they were movable, that you could pick them up and move them. Would be free too, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, well all of them would be free. What they and need to do is make the they county. They just hold them up, you know, and build another building. Well, under. well, what they do is they require that they light, heat, and cool their own offices with the power that's generated by these uh, solar panels rather than selling that to uh, 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 TVA, you know, and. Uh, uh, make them use that power, and if it don't produce enough power, I'm let them sit in the dark, or let them be hot in the summertime, or be cold in yeah, the wintertime. That would be the ideal thing. Let's put them on the courthouse and try them out. Yeah. And if it won't run that building, we don't need them. Right. I got you now. I see what you're saying, fellas. Go in there, put them on there, and pull the plug from the utility, and let them. Then I them start having county commission meetings in the daytime. I'll tell you what, I agree with you, gentlemen. Right, that right there would probably solve the problem. And maybe they wouldn't have any during uh, July and August, you know. Well, I'll tell you what. If it snowed in the daytime, they'd have to get up there to sleep. <laughs> if solar panels at this point in time were feasible, everybody around here that has money to invest, and there's plenty of money in this community, that people are more than willing to invest, but they won't punch it down a gopher hole. They'll invest it if they can get a return, a profit. And if solar panels were profitable, and I'm talking about without all the handouts or something else that goes with them, and I think even with a handout, this thing won't fly, but they'll vote it in, I believe. Uh, everybody around here would have their own solar panel, and they'd be getting off of this grid thing. I want to get me a solar-powered airplane. There you go. I, I tried wind power, but it was just too unreliable. <laughs> well, do you reckon the president would even consider that? I mean, since he's wanting to go green. I think uh, if we had Air Force One running on that stuff, we'd be all right. right. You know, they talk about no waste in the in the Pentagon budget, and, and I ain't prescripting the Pentagon, but I'm telling you something. There's waste there. They're paying, they're buying um uh, Cooking grease, diesel, what do you call that stuff? Um, I know what you're talking about. They're, they're buying that stuff. Bio, bio, bio diesel. diesel. They're buying yeah. bio diesel at thirty something dollars a gallon to run ships on because it's a green thing. Well, Them ships that they're putting in don't get miles to the gallon. They get tankers. Yeah, to the, they get they get tanks to the mile. To the tanker. Right, they get tanks to the mile. Yeah. They get well, tanker loads to the mile. The last account I heard, or what I heard, was $28 a gallon that we're paying for that stuff. Yep. And we, uh, I, I, got a, I got a question out there, and I, I don't know whether you think about this, and I don't expect an answer. What is the difference between an indentured servant and a slave? Color. Pardon? <laughs> I don't think that's right. Color. Well, no, no, it ain't it. I ain't getting into that. Okay. That well, indentured slave was, you know, uh, by definition, he was a person who sold himself into slavery for a set period of time for a certain amount. And, uh... uh a lot of people got indentured in order to get a boat ride to yeah, America. Yeah, yeah. Okay, basically what he did... An indentured servant became sir. Uh, he agreed to yeah, become. He contracted. Yeah, he a con contractor, or became a uh, whatever. We we got hit again right here by this uh, commercial. Let me stand by just a second. Okay. Well, I'm glad them commercials coming on. That means we're getting out there. Yeah, you're getting out there. This commercial. I'd like to describe it to you. It uh, it's 
somebody asking somebody if they're uh, engaging into a certain activity and <laughs> and something about if she drunk enough champagne, something they about it. They advertising Trojans, are they? <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know what they're advertising. But anyhow, I, when commercials come on, most of them I turn, mentally try to turn them off. Uh, an indentured servant is a person who enters in by his own consent to become an indentured, to work or do whatever. Yep. A person that is a slave is one that does it, does the same thing, but without his consent. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Right now, in my opinion, we the citizens out here, we're working our butts off, and we're indentured servants to the government. And you know this Second Amendment thing, you know, that this is something, a couple of little things wrote down in a thing called the Constitution? That's an outdated document put together by a bunch of uh, arrogant white men who own slaves. But that could very well be. If we give up our ability to defend ourselves, right now I see us as indentured servants. When we give up the, the right to defend ourselves, then we're going to become slaves. Slaves weren't allowed to defend themselves. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time. And well, thank you, can, sir. Right. I, I don't think that we're going to stir very much interest in these things. We'll they'll pass this stuff. They'll send us the bill. We'll pay it. We'll which I didn't use the B and gripe about it some, but we'll go ahead and pay it. And yeah, those it's just money. Well, there's going to be certain people that's going to be laughing all the way to the bank at us, gentlemen. Tomorrow night, maybe we can get up some good discussion on this matter. We'll do our best. Thank you very much. See ya. See ya. We got to tell them about them fine folks up there that takes care of heart attack victims. And people that drink rotten tomato juice. Yeah, them other people don't know when to empty their pantry. Right. In the pantry. I said pantry. <laughs> I might have emptied the pantry. Yeah, I reckon right. you did. <laughs> Yeah, but you call five six two nine three seven zero. Yeah, that there is vital That's care, vital care, care. Uh, medical transport. Been in business a long, long time. They know what they're doing. They're right there. They got a card right there on the side there on UG TV. You can look at it. Five six two nine three seven zero. Right. <coughs> they good. <coughs> A good people to right. uh, and depend on. If you get a on. real bad case of indigestion like Ronnie's got. No, uh, I've got know. a real bad case of talk yeah. too much and my throat ain't well yeah. yet. <laughs> They'll fix you right up. They'll come and get you with tender, loving care. And they don't cost, uh, you know, there's nobody in the uh, county paying for their services other than the people that are using you them. You know, Knoxville negotiate a contract to get all of their ambulance service in a place as big as Knox. That's Knox County and the city. Yeah, don't have to pay them nothing. Right. Have we can't manage to do that around here. Lord, no. How in the world could we support all these people if we didn't pay them all that money? 5629370 for the best managed, one of the best managed little medical transport companies in the country. Right, and it was not incubated. Didn't have no incubator for it. Yeah. No fee. Don't cost. Don't cost you taxpayers or me anything. No, you taxpayers and me. Unless I use it. And uh, when I used it, my insurance paid their part, and I had a little bit left over, and I immediately paid that bill because I appreciated their service so much. I didn't even let the. Uh, uh, stamp get dry that they mailed it. I bet they didn't fool around and not file for their part, did they? I bet they got their part. Yeah. I bet they file for. You know, sometimes down here at that other uh, accounting office, they forget to file. They misplaced six hundred thousand dollars. No, no money out of their pocket if they don't file. There's money out of our pocket if they don't. And you know, they could uh, if, if it's if they're losing that kind of money. And they could have hired somebody that didn't do nothing except do that. They could have got somebody that would have done that for 30000 a year. 
Well, sure, I believe they charged off for one time. They charged uh, uh, $600,000. Yep. So $30,000 a year, five, three, ten years, no, 20 years. They could have hired somebody for 20 years on what they lost in one year. Right. But what I know, I can't run a county like this. I ain't smart enough. No, no, just, just not smart enough. You got, you got to, it make a difference when you're smart. You got to love the people. And love the children, too. You got to love, love the children. Love the children. Okay. It make a difference that these little fellas that are in school right now are going to be paying on these debts that they're making right now. I mean, they're making debts for these. they got to look at these children. they got to keep them educated and healthy so they can pay these bills they've made. <laughs> yeah, I reckon, you know. Man, these... And you do know we're going to be uh, uh, getting a new uh, school superintendent, don't you? Well, they're talking that way. The new city administrator and the new school superintendent. We're just in business, I reckon. Yeah. We uh, we got it all going on. Just like Bo give him a call, ain't we, yeah. Bob? Yeah. So, you just can't beat it. You can't keep up with them boys down there at Jacksboro now. Uh, you ever try to kill one of them old jumping crickets in your basement? <laughs> I mean, you got to swat worse, it. It's worse than trying to run over a guinea. Again, it? it's, trying to pin, it's worse than trying to pin one of your uh, uh, county officials down on, uh, on uh, an issue. You know, uh, uh, what's his name, Tom, never did get upset about uh, outside businesses coming in here taking our business yeah. until they got into the tree business. Really? Yeah. I hadn't heard that part. Well, yeah, he didn't want them to be able to use the uh, county landfill to dump their brush. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, because they were not a uh, Campbell County business. Well, it's know. Campbell County even, brush. Uh, right, even though they were doing business for, uh, I guess, uh, the power company. They were doing business for the power company, yeah. And... Uh, they gave them permission to dump their brush in the county landfill up there, and uh, that evoked some response by Tom, who's in the tree business. Now, I can understand that, but you need know, to be just as diligent uh, about these other businesses that come in here and take... Uh, well, he's busy with guardrails. Huh? He's busy with guardrails. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, guardrails up on... Uh, what was his, what's the name of that? Uh, that road down there, I don't know. Down by Jacksburg Middle. Right, yeah. So, uh, well, you know how it is, you know. Uh, uh, everybody's freedom stops, I guess, where your nose begins. And uh, uh, so, uh, same thing's true with business. They can just have it wide open, just like, just like they let that old boy come in here. Uh, Mark does, uh, uh, down here, right below us. And what's Mark's last name? Hoskins. Mark Hoskins. Let that, old, let that old boy come in from Florida. He comes down here and sets up. Uh, no expense or anything. No lot fee, no license, no nothing. And uh, sells his watermelons. And me up there uh, having rent at where I'm at and having other expenses. Uh, and it's very, very hard for me to compete uh, with somebody like Why that. Why don't you just go down there and set up on Mark's lot? Well, I, I, told, I did that one time, and then Mark uh, uh, saw that thought there was going to be some conflict, so he told him not to set up there anymore, but he just keeps right on coming back, you know. Uh, but uh, then, then they said, if I go down there and set up, uh, then I'm going to have to beat his prices. And... Uh, See, I'll have more in mind than he will here. Yeah, you'll still be paying rent up here. Huh? You'll still be paying rent He's up here. You'll be paying rent up here. And uh, so it's very, very difficult to make a living. I can understand that as far as Tom's point of view is concerned. When you have people from out of the area uh, that don't have some of the expenses you have. Uh, 
uh, to come in and start doing business here. Well, has anybody ever thought about the fact that there was businesses here for for years paying taxes, and when Walmart come in, they gave them all sorts of breaks in order to get them to come in so they could put the other people out of business who's been paying taxes, who continue to pay taxes, and then Walmart left to done the same deal with Lowe's? Right. Well, you know, uh, the people who have been paying taxes, they don't make their uh, problems known. They need to speak out more. Uh, well, that's just like whenever, whenever you see a, a nail sticking up, you hammer it down. Right. I've been hammered down. I know to keep my mouth shut now. Right. Yeah, you need to keep a low profile, really, you know. Yeah. Uh, because if not, you'll have somebody at your front door, your back door, yep. your side door. Throwing your stuff over the hill, uh, making right, you pick it up. Pushing it, pushing it over the hill, and, and then calling the EPA, you know. Uh, uh, you know, there are words for people that, to describe people like that. Yeah, mayor, city council. Well, no, I'm talking <laughs> about a little bit more... Uh, uh, I was on the seamy side. Oh, I, oh, oh. I, well, I, you don't I believe you could speak well, that. Well, just considering the track record around this place, I don't believe you could call anybody right. much lower name than right. say mayor. Right, no, you, you really can't. Or uh, uh, maybe you could you, you could go to uh, uh, code enforcement. Well, that's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, Bob, we've it? got in another wonderful almost hour. It's time to coast to the end. If you'd like, would you like to make your closing statement, uh, folks, fellow Americans? I'm for you. I'm with him. I'm for you. We'll be on tomorrow night if they don't catch us right here on UG TV and also concurrently on Channel 12 at WLAF. Channel 12, La Follette, and they're called Local Access Channel, which has some of the best programming in the world. I want, I want to mention one thing, you know, if you have problems with your automobile, and it's cold weather, it won't crank, or like one fellow this morning, he, he had two flat tires all at one time. We have uh, a uh, road service truck available that has the air compressors on it and whatever you need to to get you going and if you'll call 423-201-5917 uh, uh, that other one five, is that the one I got yeah that's you know Lyston. that's our Lyston that's the one you had so long quit working that uh, 871 2019 mm -hmm. well what happened I let one of my employees use it and he just wore that thing out you know I don't know why in the world people who don't have nearly as much business to do as I do can find so much more to talk about. It says it's been disconnected. Huh? No longer in service. Right. Well, that's why I just didn't give him more minutes on it. Well, listen, here is had a hard life. You, oh, well. Folks, uh, happy trails to you. Right. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure and catch us again tomorrow night if you can. Check us out on, um, follow the links there on uh, UG TV, where you're looking. Now, if you look up there, it says, uh, you can see the archive shows on Ustream by clicking where it says here. Or you can go on over and look at these things we've got, some of the music videos and whatnot we've got on uh, YouTube, where it says here again. So right. if it ain't here and there, it's here and here. Right. Hear ye, hear ye. Happy trails, everybody. Right. Thank you. We we'll really appreciate you, you watching folks. us. See you tomorrow night. I'm a fiction to sign off. <laughs>